here we are. And uh, here we are in uh, Ramadan as well. I've uh, been fasting for three weeks now and I'm spaced out and uh, I'm going to be slower than usual. Okay. But the That's genocide right. is continuing and they couldn't care less, you know, that the uh, International Court of Justice has, no, it was the Security Council that asked for a uh, a truce during Ramadan and the Zionists couldn't care less. So what, so what exactly happened? Well, they're preparing to uh, occupy the Rafa region, which is the last uh, region that has not been occupied by the uh, invasion of Gaza. And uh, I think their intention is to round up uh, all the military-aged uh, men, isolate them, there's photos now that I've been posting on Facebook uh, showing how they're bound and uh, stripped of their outer clothing and with a number, you know, written on their back. And uh, they're held there as captives, you know, even though they're civilians. And uh, their intention is to uh, separate the uh, military age men, you know, from the uh, general population so they cannot become they cannot become fighters. They cannot, uh, you know, become, uh, you know, f fighters for Hamas. You know, Hamas has lost, you know, according to the, uh, the Zionist regime, 6,000 fighters. And uh, their initial estimate of uh, Hamas uh, having a, a, a military uh, force of... Uh, 30,000 has now been revised to be 40,000. And uh, they haven't even counted the uh, the Palestinians who are now joining Hamas in order to fight against the occupation. So their intention is to try to get rid of this fighting force and to reduce the population to uh, uh, to captives, basically. And... Uh, well they want to, you know, uh, expel the uh, Hamas. They want the Hamas, you know, fighters to surrender, and then be expelled into uh, some sort of prison camp in Egypt, that's being set up, you know, by the uh, Egyptian regime. That's what it seems as this uh, is, is, is what it's coming down to. You're saying the Egyptians are collaborating with the Israelis to set up a prison? Yeah. They're setting up a uh, an area in Egypt across the border from Rafa, right. in Egyptian Rafa. They brought in these concrete slabs, you know, like like what the Zionists use, you know, to set up the um, apartheid wall. They're setting up, you know, a, a confined area surrounded by these cement uh, cement stru structures walls right. Right. Should, to yeah. contain the, uh, the Hamas fighters. Who are supposed to uh, surrender, you know, and be transferred into uh, Egypt for that purpose. However, I would not recommend this kind of surrender. I'd rather, I'd rather die fighting than surrender. Because what happened in uh, Beirut in 1982 is that, with the occupation of uh, West Beirut by um, Israeli General Sharon, and then they. Uh, of uh, uh, forced the surrender of the 5,000 uh, PLO fighters who were then transferred into Tunisia. So they saved themselves, but uh, what happened is that he, in spite of the fact that the United States had um, guaranteed the security of the Palestinian refugees who were unarmed, in particular in Sabra Shatila refugee camps in Beirut, the United States did nothing. Israel uh, surrounded the place and uh, sent in their trained uh, Phalangist fighters, fascist fighters, a Christian fascist uh, crusader fighters that were trained by the Mossad, they were sent into the refugee camps to uh, massacre all of the population, all, all the population, everyone. And that was 3,000 who were killed inside the refugee camps of Sabra Shatila. And then the men who were separated and sent to a, a you know, um, a soccer stadium somewhere you know they were all killed, all killed as well, and uh, so it's you know from three to five thousand Palestinian refugees were killed in that way, because the PLO fighters you know were sent away to Tunisia. 
and uh, together with the leadership, together with Arafat. Uh, and so, you know, this cannot be repeated again. And the and the and Hamas knows this. You know, they will not surrender because it only means death for the civilians. So interesting. interesting. Well, yeah. But the Palestinians are willing to fight to death because they know they have no other choice. You know, and the Palestinian civilians, they're not willing to leave Gaza, even to save their lives. You know, they're not willing to leave, say, except for the most desperate, I suppose, because they don't want to end up, you know, like the five million Palestinian refugees are still surviving in the refugee camps, you know, spread out over the region or now are being cut off, you know, from uh, United Nations Refugee Relief uh, Organization. You know, the United States has now decided in the latest piece of legislation to permanently cut off funding for UNRWA. So they're permanently cutting off funding for Palestinian refugees. And what are the Palestinian refugees supposed to do? Well, that's not mentioned in the legislation. Never, never mentioned. Yeah. This, this concerns me because with the shift back, with the shift of the world's attention back to the Russia because of the terrorist bombing there two weekends ago. Now the struggle in Western Asia is not getting the media focus that it was it was getting. Yeah. Um, and therefore many people don't know what you just shared, this plan to basically um, force Palestinians into an Egyptian, an Egyptian uh, uh, enclave to possibly later be killed, which is kind of, that's, that isn't a good option. Um, but I'm reading other things though, about the Palestinians actually winning. I, and that the, and that Israel has not invaded Rafa for some political reasons. Um, the West, some Western countries, United States is under great pressure from this country. There's a lot of pressure being put on the Biden administration Cut the cut this nonsense, and to um, stop Israel from carrying out any more attacks on the Palestinians. There haven't been major major demonstrations here in a while. However, the I want I want to say the majority of Americans do not like what they're seeing. Uh, the ones who like it are are a minority, and yes, by, you're right. Yeah, the latest poll indicated 55% were opposed to this uh, war. So I, I, I mentioned to a person this week, a, a matter of fact, Thursday evening, a conversation. I kept saying the issue of Palestine must come up in every debate, every speech, every every time the presidential campaign um, turn, shows up, the issue of Palestine must be front and center the most important issue. And here's why. Eventually, gas prices will go down. They will. Eventually, some domestic problems will, 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 will be resolved with either Biden or Trump. But the Palestinian question, the entire world knows that that question, the resolution of that question lies in the United States. It doesn't rely with Israel. It relies with the United States. So the United States people involved in these elections have to make this a central campaign. Mm. And I'm and you know, whoever, whatever candidate is running, whatever they have a debate, whatever people have a chance to weigh in, the first thing, Palestinian right to self-determination. What are we doing about it? I'm not talking about October 7. It's much more than that. I think that is imperative to keep that issue on the front burner. Because if it's put on the back burner, it's over. Hmm. If, yeah, I think uh, I think I think if, if it's on the front burner, we will do a great support for our brothers yeah. and sisters in Palestine. We yeah. have to do. That. We we really yeah. don't have any choice. Yeah, it's like uh, every every revolutionary movement depends upon the success of the Palestinians in warding off this uh, fascist yes. invasion. Yes, everything yes, depends yes. on this. Yes, yeah. it, it it is it is crucial because mm. everybody has seen the naked genocide 
the mm -hmm. naked brutality, the naked destruction of Israel with firm U.S. backing and assistance. So yeah. for that to be forgotten or put in the back burner or be to be dismissed would, would be a great defeat for social justice worldwide. Oh, yes. Because if they get away with this genocide in Gaza, they'll do it to any other revolutionary experience any, anywhere any else other, in the world. Any, anywhere else in the world. That's right. Yeah. Including New York, Atlanta, yeah. no yeah. matter where. You know. Well, Atlanta, Atlanta you know, has been a hotbed. Uh, there's been one activist murdered by the uh, police a few months ago uh, regarding this, the struggle against Cop City, yeah. a, a privately funded police training center. They have dozens of people under under indictment for ra racketeering and uh, running a racketeering influence corrupt organization, RICO, a, a, a law that was passed to fight the mob. They have, I want to say, 60 activists, 60, 60, 60, 60 in Atlanta have been arrested on RICO charges. So they mm -hmm. are fighting back in Atlanta. They are. Mm -hmm. It's one of the centers right now of mm -hmm. this movement to uh to to to, to uh, criminalize dissent is in Atlanta under under a black mayor. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, you know, I've read about the cop city, and it seems like that they're training the cops to be a uh, uh, a military force to attack and carry out pogroms in the black. Ghettos of America. America. Well, they, they, there was a story recently from Mississippi um, in Rankin County. I think last year, two, two, two black men were sexually assaulted, physically assaulted, and um, bound and gagged by a group of white policemen in Rankin County, Mississippi, along the same line. There was some claim that a white woman was being held hostage in a home or something. The police kicked in the door, raided the house, and just abused the men in some ways that I don't even want to discuss on, on, on this show. Mm -hmm. It was just the tip of the iceberg. The police chief has refused to resign. Mm -hmm. there, were convicts, there were convictions brought on all charges. And what I'm saying is this happened in the light of the George Floyd protests. Uh -huh. There have been some people saying the George Floyd protests were not successful. I disagree. We wouldn't expect the George Floyd protests to end police brutality, will we? No. The George Floyd protests could not end police brutality. But what it brought was the reckoning of large numbers of people who were against cop terror to put it to to let the state and the police know you're you are being watched and if and and, and, and if and when you get out of hand. We might not win, but 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 we will fight back. So mm -hmm. I consider that a victory. Five policemen were sentenced to up up to twenty five years in prison wow. for, for assaulting these two uh, African American men around between twenty eight and forty five years old. They were viciously assaulted, just for no reason. Twenty five years, good. That's good. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking so. forward to the reception committee inside the prison as well. Me too. Yes. So yeah. am I. You know. Um, 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 Derek Chauvin, you know, met his committee there. He should have, didn't he? Yeah. He should have. Yeah. Well, what what can save the Palestinians? You know, this is, uh, I'm drawing a blank. You know, millions of people demonstrating. Okay, so they've forced the United States, you know, to abstain in the vote in the Security Council and then claim afterwards that it's non-binding because they abstained. <laughs> doesn't apply to them because they abstained you know what about majority rule <laughs> you know like what about you know legal procedure you know like nothing of that nature counts no, anymore no okay. it apply to them no no yeah I, I i i do think the question has to be asked because we're at a point now where we've had millions of people in the streets the israeli occupation is continuing and and, and is widening Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have to continue to, to evolve our movement with strategies and tactics that have the goal of Palestinian self-determination. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know it has to be a conversation that involves more than more than more than us as two people, 
But I think you're right. We do need to consider what's occurred, what progress has been made, what issues still re are resolving, or what issues still need to be resolved, and what are we and and what are we going to do about it? I totally agree. Hmm. I, yeah. Uh, in the here and now uh, this week with uh, Ahmed, he mentioned. Uh, He was uh, speaking in a very uh, pessimistic way, but in a very steadfast way as well. And uh, okay. the Palestinians are not going to give up. Now, what he mentioned that was very interesting and new was that he considered this to be a three-front war. Okay. okay. First of all, Hamas fighters are fighting back. And yes. they're relatively yes. successful, you know, like they've taken yeah. out, you know, even, you know, the Zionist regime admits that they've lost uh, 253 soldiers. That's, you know, That's uh, pretty incredible. Uh, killed soldiers. And, yeah. and then there's all the injured soldiers as well. Okay, so which is probably three times as much. But in any case, 253 is what they admit. But they don't include October the 7th. On October oh. the 7th, there was another 253 that were killed, you know, who were there, you know, in the military camps around Gaza, surrounding Gaza, and they were taken out in the first hour of the offensive by the 1,200 Hamas fighters. <laughs> you know, like, those are the ones, you know, who are sniping, you know, the civilians who were demonstrating, you know, in the Great March of Return two years right. ago. Right. right. Those were the murderous, you know, uh, Israelis, you know, who were, you know, set, you know, to encircle the, the Gazans and to take them down, you know, if they came anywhere, you know, close to the fence. So, you know, like, and they killed anywhere, you know, 350, anywhere, you know, uh, civilians at that time. So, you know. Anywhere close to the fence, just close. Yeah. Just close. The, yeah. I yeah mean, unarmed, you know, civilians, you unarmed, know, just unarmed. wanting to come, go back, unarmed. you know, to where their grandparents had lived before, you know, that's all, you know. They, you know, they would have even, you know, shared the kibbutzim, you know, with the Israelis, you know, if they were given the opportunity, probably, you know, anything's better than Gaza. But yeah. no, they were just taken down, including that nurse. Wow. Uh, so, Incredible. okay, that's the first front. Okay. And it is holding steady. Okay. Right. Now, the second front is Lebanon. Right. And there, you know, Hezbollah is taking on the whole Zionist military and they're afraid to invade Lebanon like they did before, you know, because they would be, they would be, you know, like decimated there by Hezbollah. And, uh, and so that's the second front. And it's, you know, uh, it's uh, having a relative success, you know, in uh, taking out the military outposts uh, on the border with Lebanon and taking out the settlements there, the colonies, you know, that have been placed on the border area as well in order to claim that territory, you know, for the Zionist state. Okay. And, and 125,000 uh, settlers, Israeli settlers who were living there before, have not gone back because they can't. You know, part of their, you know, uh, their uh, villages have been destroyed, you know, by the missiles, you know, like sophisticated missiles, not, you know, the... Uh, sugar and and uh, fertilizer you know uh mortars you know of hamas no these are real missiles and they have missiles you know that are even bigger that can go anywhere you know tel aviv anywhere you know like in the hull of the uh of palestine so that's the second front okay. and what ahmad said you know that really you know surprised and encouraged me he considered the third front to be the internal front of the Jewish opposition against the Zionist leadership inside the Jewish community and from within the Jewish community. And then he was talking about, you know, the Jewish Bund vigil as well that I conduct on Sundays tomorrow at the Jewish community campus here in Montreal. And there should be uh, such vigils everywhere, wherever there's a, you know, the, the uh, Jewish center, you know, it, there should be a picket line there, an informational picket line to uh, educate the Jewish people going in there to tell them that they shouldn't be afraid to oppose fascism. And this is what they're faced with. Not only the Palestinians are being faced with fascism, it's the Jewish people are being faced with fascism. You know, the Zionist government, you know, of Netanyahu, you know, you know, they claim to be a democratic dictatorship, okay? <laughs> you know, so... 
Oh, they get the democracy. Where do they get the democratic part from? You know, even though it's, you know, like blatant contradiction, you know, but where do they get the democratic part from? Because they're elected by the citizens, you know, of uh, of the of the Zionist state, you know, who are citizens there, the, you know, with 20%, you know, who are Palestinians as well, who are citizens, but they get their mandate, you know, from the 80%, you know, who are Jewish there. Well, they don't even have that, you know, because those uh, fascists who are in the war cabinet, they have only, you know, like seven or nine seats, you know, in the whole parliament of the Knesset there. You know, where do they get, you know, to claim that there's some kind of a majority? And even if that government was initially elected by a majority, it's only a minority of the Jewish people who have a vote in those elections. You know, they don't speak for the Jewish people. Majority of the Jewish people do not have a vote in the Israel elections. We have nothing to do with that government. And there are 7.4 million Jewish Americans, and there's only 7.2 Jewish Israelis. And of those, you know, a lot have left. A lot have left. You know, maybe a million have left to go to where? California, Miami, Berlin. For mm -hmm. sure, they don't want to stick around there. They don't want to be forced in the military. They're draft dodgers, basically, is what they are. They're not mentioned as such, you know, because that would be an embarrassment, you know, to the Zionist movement. Right, right. That Jewish people don't want to fight for the Zionist project. And now they're so desperate that they're trying to force the Orthodox yeshiva students into the military to fight for the Zionists. And then they claim, you know, that 20% uh, of, of the uh, ultra-Orthodox are not studying hard enough, that they're not doing full-time studies in the yeshiva, and therefore they should be pulled out and put into the military. <laughs> wow. You know? Yeah. Wow. I mean, how do they know, first of all, you know, that these students are not studying hard enough? You know, <laughs> they're not in there. They're not in yeshivas. And second of all, the, uh, the altered orthodox, you know, they're demonstrating. They're blocking the streets. They're getting beaten by the police. They're being dragged away. Everything is happening to them. And uh, they will not go into the military. There's a few who have gone, you know, because of the privileges involved. But they are irrelevant, you know. The vast majority of the ultra orthodox will not go and fight for the Zionist regime. They're not Zionists, even though you know their political representatives, you know, are part of the uh, a part of the Zionist government, you know, that is conducting this genocide right now. Oh, so question is, how effective can the Jewish opposition be in taking on the Zionist leadership? Actually. I, very effective, I, I, very effective. I, I'm so surprised, I, yeah, you know. Yeah, the anti-Zionist Jewish organizations like uh, Jewish Voice for Peace, and if not now, uh, they have forced uh, the, like, J Street and uh, the other, you know, uh, uh, um, what is it, uh, um, for peace, uh, something for peace. Uh, yeah, th those two big organizations that have, you know, like a mass membership, Right. They have come out in support of who? Chuck Schumer, who just called for the downfall of the Netanyahu government, <laughs> which is basically calling for a revolution against the Zionist regime there. <laughs> it's not worded as such, but that's what it is. And that's what it's how it's treated as, you know, by the Zionist, you know, ideologues who are denouncing Chuck yeah. Schumer for speaking out at a time when all Jewish people have to support, you know, the Zionist government because it's a time of war and you're not allowed to criticize the Zionist government because it's wartime. And they're defending the Jewish people, supposedly. This is the, you know, dogma that's that's fed to everybody. It now sure he's is. broken that. It's gone, you know, that whole sort of, you know, uh, 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 prohibition of dissent. Uh, by Jewish people against the Zionist regime, it's gone, it's blown away. And then it was followed by the abstention of the United States government, which means nothing, but, you know, it's still, they wouldn't have done it otherwise if there wasn't the pressure being put on them. So. That's right. You're right. Brother. You're right. I mean, all, all the points you, all the points you're making are leading to the inevitable victory for the Palestinians. The question is, how long how much longer will this go on? I would say decades, if not centuries, that's my opinion. And how can we make sure that those of us who are not in Israel are who are not in Palestine, who are not fighters there, how can we how can we be sure to build a movement that will support them from this point on? We and will we, overcome the Zionists. Yes, I know that for sure, because you know, when I speak with the uh, 
the, the Jewish people, you know, who have been indoctrinated by television news, uh, you know, on the vigil, there's a change happening. And uh, they are beginning to realize, you know, that there's something going on here that they don't want, but they still feel compelled to go along with it for the time being. But they will not allow it to continue. Now, the question is, at what cost to the Palestinians? Yes, at what cost to the Palestinians? You know, if we look back at other revolutionary struggles, you know, in Vietnam, you know, uh, I've read accounts that it was 1.3 million or perhaps up to 3 million Vietnamese who were who died, you know, during those wars, you know, both the French and the American wars uh, of uh, counter-revolution in, in Vietnam. And they won. And they wouldn't give up. Even, you know, when the first two offensives, you know, took place and there was a, a mass loss of, you know, Vietnamese fighters, nonetheless, they carried off a third offensive, which was successful. And that was, you know, General Tran, who organized right. those three uh, offensives. And he didn't have the full support of the entire, you know, Politburo, you know, of the Vietnamese Communist Party. It was, you know, a very iffy thing there, you know, because they were, uh, they were beginning to back down. But, uh, yes. but, uh, but they persevered, you know, the steadfastness, you know, which is so important for the Palestinians, you know, like worked for the Vietnamese. Then let's take on, on the uh, the example of Algeria. During the French occupation, the France occupation of Algeria, there were millions who were lost there too. They were genocidal. They were wiping out, you know, uh, anybody and everybody who they thought, you know, might be a source of revolutionary uh, action in Algeria. And they lost, uh, from what I remember, up to 3 million Algerians, you know, were killed by France. And France has never apologized, never done any sort of compensation has never right. done anything you know to make up for that as well but there in in algeria you know they were able to overcome the uh, Fr uh, france occupation and the uh, the french colonials uh, citizens who were there and taking advantage and 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 uh, enjoying the privileges you know of colonial rule they left they went back to france okay and they tried to wow. carry out a a, a coup d'etat against general de gaulle who was initially a rightist, you know, but he realized, you know, that they could not win there. And he pulled out of Algeria. And because of that, the French colonials who were the, the super fascists, you know, you know, thought of, you know, assassinating and even, you know, carrying out a coup d'etat against, you know, General de Gaulle, who was the president at the time. But they failed. Okay. But the problem here is even more intransigible because the, uh, the Jewish Israelis don't have, you know, double citizenship, except for 17%. Wow. And 17% wow. uh, you, know, you have citizenship from uh, the United States or England or France or uh, or whatever, you know, and they could leave. But those are the ones who are the most fanatic. You know? like, so, they, you know, they, they're there, you know, because they want, you know, the colonial privileges that go along, you know, with their rule. And so they will not leave easily. But that's only 17% in any case. The rest don't have anywhere to go. So the United States is, is not going to accept five, five million Jewish Israelis who nope, have given up happen. on Zionism. Will you know? not happen. Will not happen. Nope. Will not happen. You know, you know, you know they, they wouldn't even let Jewish, you know, refugees in after the Holocaust, you know, never mind, you know, yeah, at yeah. this point here. I'm sorry, I mean, I, but but if they do show up, my friend, I guarantee you, they'll give them citizenship as quick as they can. They'll become citizens as quick as possible. Hmm. Yes, they will, because they'll, they'll keep them being Oleg. Hmm. So, how to deal with the, uh, the Zionist movement is, again, by the internal Jewish revolution against the Zionist parties. And yes. this has to happen not only here in the United States, it also has to happen inside of Palestine. There has to be an overthrow of all those political parties, including the Labour Party, <laughs> the Zionist Labour Party, you know, which is a member of the Second International still, including the PLO, 
you know, the Zionist Labor Party has got to go. It has to be expelled from the Second International. Israel has to be expelled from the United Nations General Assembly. There has to be a general overturning of the Zionist power base within the Jewish community and internationally in the United Nations and elsewhere. And sanctions, they have to be you know, totally isolated, both diplomatically, economically. And then, you know, there's also the addition of the Yemen offensive against the Zionist regime. Yes, again, the hidden story again. The hidden story. Yeah. The hidden well, story. but I feel, I feel not only sort of wasted, you know, because of fasting, I feel so weak, you know, politically. Because when I go there on the on the vigil, you know, last week, there was one, you know, Jewish anarchist guy, Max, the bookseller, came by, you know, had a few things to say, and then left, you know, like he couldn't think, you know, it's in, inconceivable for him to stay there, you know, and keep the vigil going together with me, you know? Yes, it is, it is. And then the other, you know, like a Jewish anarchist, you know, who lives in the area, Leslie, I will denounce him here and now, you know, like Leslie, you know, he only showed up once and he hasn't shown up again. And then the others, you know, the other Jewish uh, radicals, you know, like who are assimilationists who never identified as being Jewish before, all of a sudden discover that they're Jewish, you know, because it works, you know, to get some attention, you know, when they denounce the Zionism. Okay, fine. But, you know, when it comes to sort of, you know, dealing with and educating the Jewish community, no, right. nothing. You know, they treat the Jewish community as if they're you know, equivalent to, you know, soldiers, you know, in Gaza, which they are not. One, they didn't have a vote. Yeah, no, never yeah, voted for the government. Two, yeah. they don't go and, you know, they're not soldiers. They don't go there, you know, to fight. And the few who have gone, you know, I haven't even heard anything of them, you know, because I think there's so few. In France, you know, uh, they have a lot of, you know, like uh, French Jewish citizens who go there to fight, you know, in Gaza. Right, 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 right. I remember, I remember. But South yeah, Africa, I, I, you know, I, I, the Jewish South Africans who come back, you know, they get arrested, right, you know, because they're sure. criminals. You know, that's what happens to you know, real criminals like that. Put them in jail. Yeah. Totally so they won't go back jail. again. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. We want to, we need to put them in jail. I agree. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot for us to do, my friend. There's a lot, there's a lot for us left to do. But we but, have to be steadfast and continue to struggle because our brothers, sisters, our people in Palestine need our support. Period. That's it. Yeah. So I have to issue an appeal here, you know, to to other Jewish people, you know, here to share this video, the one with Ahmad as well, to tell other Jewish people that they have to sort of, you know, step up. This is the time for them to step up. Otherwise, they will be denounced, you know, forever. And their children will be denouncing them forever as well. Well, so now's the time to step up. Now's the time. Now's yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll go back tomorrow. But uh, the camera on. Yeah, the camera has to be on all the time, you know, because I, I, I'm getting attacked all the time. All the time. I'm not only getting attacked, you know, by, you know, the uh, young women and and middle aged women coming up and shouting at me, you know, like shouting into my face, you know, like you can see it all there. There's also the the men who come to attack. Last time, you know, that I got in, there was an attack. You know, some guy who was supporting genocide, basically. And so I got pissed off with him. And so he came and tried to rip off, you know, the painting that I have up on the lamppost, the one that says, you know, one Holocaust does not justify yes. another. Yes. He damaged it a bit, you know, but he didn't tear it. And I fixed it up and I'm going to be putting it back up, but higher. Because it's All the right. second time that that painting got attacked. They cannot take that. They cannot take it, you know, because they realize, you know, when one says, you know, one Holocaust does not justify another, that they're doing something that they will condemn themselves they condemn the holocaust and yet they're committing another holocaust and they cannot be you know uh told that they are doing it you know because they're too neurotic you know a psychotic neurotic you know mentality that these that these zionists have is just incredible so yeah. you know has to be defended against and that's the second time you know i i have to use you know the bamboo pole you know holding up the banner to ward off this guy Wow. So you know, uh, he had to let go of the of the painting when I uh, uh, when I basically you know uh, took a took a swipe at him with the with a bamboo pole, but uh, uh, but uh, he grabbed hold of the pole and I had to sort of you know uh, get it released you know and he and he had an advantage on me there you know but he still had to back off, and uh, so 
that was uh, that was uh, oh, successful enough. But uh, that, that, it's going to happen again, you know. And I'm going to fight them off again, you know. That's that's it. That's all. That's all we can do. Well, and then in court, you know, I'm going back with a constitutional challenge, you know, saying that this is a violation of freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, you know. So, and I think we can win that in court. And once I win that in court, whoa, what that what means is that it? I can go inside the building. <laughs> I'll be able to go inside to any meeting. I can speak. I'll be able to ask questions. I'll be able to do all of that once I get, you know, acquitted in court. And then they will not be able to stop me. And they then we're going to see, right. you know, something happening. You know, something's going to happen in Jewish community so because so of this, this mini school initiative, you know, like it's going to crack the whole thing open. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay, we don't have much time left in this session, but I think we've covered all the important points. I think we so, continue. Too. I really do. We continue. Okay. But what what is the USA going to do? This is the crucial thing, you know. And the they USA, can stop the genocide well, just like that. Well, no, the USA, if the if the American I hate to say this, but if Americans continue to protest and weigh in at the ballot box against Biden during during the primaries, he will have to he will have to change his views. He'll he'll yeah. have he'll have to enforce a ceasefire. Because if he doesn't, because yeah. if he doesn't, my prediction is he will lose. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's on the way to losing. Yeah, I think so. On the way to losing. On the way to losing. And but I think that uh, Trump can also, you know, uh, be a loser too, you know, because uh, yeah. uh, uh, Dr. Cornell West, if he gets 4%, and if uh, Dr. Jill Stein gets another 4%, I mean, even if they don't make the 5%, you know, where they get funding for the next election, you know, 8%, you know, off, that means that neither of those candidates are going to get a majority, you know, neither Biden yeah, yeah, nor Trump this, are going to get a majority, yeah, which was, maybe, you know, this, this may D, be the election, you know right? yeah, so then, you know, like, all of a sudden, the government, you know, like, becomes, uh, uh, loses its credibility, and and the other, the opposing party, you know, can say, you know, we don't have to respect that government, because they don't have a majority, you know, whoever wins, you know, right. so the whole thing falls apart, you know, the whole sort of, you know, like, charade of democracy you know which is not democracy is going to come apart that's what i think is going to happen that's what i'm hoping for you know the third party candidates you know are playing a very important role here very very very, very important role but it's they're not perceived as important right now hmm. they're not the body politics is only democrats and republicans are important and that's and that's that's something that hopefully this election might change. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll see. Okay, looking forward to the next poll results and see how right. much you know the opposition, you know, garners there. And we got two opposition initiatives, you know, both of them credible. It's magnificent. Something's you know is gonna gonna change, you know, in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, looking forward to next week speaking with you, Steve. Thank Great. you. Great. Here and now.